I've been asked quite a few times what my favourite gas mask is, so I thought I'd do a detailed video on it, sort of a review if you like. It's the Avon CT12 respirator, and I've covered it before in other videos, but I thought I'd do a video exclusively on it. So, the CT12 is a spin-off of the Avon FM12 mask, and the FM12 is sort of the second generation of the S10. So, if you're completely unfamiliar with the mask, I'll go into it. Avon Rubber, up until very recently, was the uh, manufacturer of most of the army and civilian gas masks used by Britain from pretty much right after World War One. As soon as masks were made from rubber, Avon Rubber was making them. Avon Rubber also designs a lot of the masks. They're basically um, an aerospace and defence industry as well as a sort of commercial rubber company. So, Avon had made a mask called the S6. My S6 in my collection isn't actually an Avon one, it's one made by Birmingham and Leyland Rubber. But a lot of basically rubber manufacturers got the rights or a licence or were issued them by the government to make the masks. So Avon, after the S6, made a mask called the S10 in the 1980s. Now the S10 is one of the easily one of the best modern masks made. If you've got a really big collection, you might argue there are other masks which are better, but in my personal opinion, the S10 was very, very good. Now, around the time Britain wanted to swap the S10, and I don't particularly know why, because the GSR they've moved to, in my opinion, isn't as good a mask, Avon proposed a mask called the FM12. And the FM12 is pretty much an updated S10. The mask is lighter weight, it sits closer to your face, and they've just, you know, improved a lot of the little areas of the mask. The idea is, if you have a mask that sits closer to your face, you get a better field of view, and you can reduce some of the bulk in the mask without, you know, going into much. Um, so what I'm going to do for you now is get an S10 out so we can compare the features on them. Then I'll show you what's better on the CT12, and I'll explain the difference between an FM12 and a CT12, but the main difference is the CT12 here doesn't have a drinking tube on it. The FM12 has a drinking tube, but it also weighs more and then I'll test it with an S10 filter. Um, just in case you're interested in the bag, it says it's from Grizzly Bushcraft, hopefully that's visible on the camera, and you can buy these on Amazon for about £6 each for a brand new gas mask satchel style bag, so it's quite good if you've got masks without bags and want to store them properly. So it's not rubberized or anything, but there you go. So I'll get an S10 out and we can compare the two masks. Okay, so the mask on the left is the S10, the mask on the right is the CT12. As you can see, the CT12 looks like a slightly miniaturised version of it. The sort of XAL voice diaphragm section is smaller than the S10s. As I said, missing the drinking tube, but that's um, because it's a CT12, not the FM12. The eye lenses are also smaller. The outserts for the S10 will not fit properly onto the CT12 because they are, as I said, smaller. The CT12 FM12 has its own type of outserts. The mask is lighter as well quite a bit lighter. One of the things as well we noticed with the S10 is the S10 has this ridge along here and that's supposedly so helmets don't sort of bend over on it and NBC suit hoods stick properly on the mask however it's not a needed thing. If we turn it over this is the filter I'm going to be using afterwards you'll notice that the CT12 and the FM12 design has a mesh nice comfortable harness. The S10 has a rubber harness. For rubber harnesses it's fairly comfortable but I am not a fan personally of them. They're better in a contaminated sort of scenario but personally I find I prefer the straps just because they're a bit more comfortable. If we have a look at each side of the mask, standard filter intake is in the same place. Both of these are the same size masks, just to give you an idea how the CT12 has been made, you know, miniaturized. Now, one of the key differences is with an S10, the voice diaphragm is fixed. I think with the SF10 and some of the other variants, you can remove these. With a CT12, you can actually take that off. So if you wanted to have a filter on both sides, you could do that. If you wanted to, um, if you're a left-handed shooter and wanted only one filter on, you could swap it round to the other side and have only one filter intake. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to be using one filter on one side, but that's really the only differences between the masks. As you can see, maybe on the camera, S10 is dated 2009, my CT12 is dated 2001. So, 
the CT12, despite being an older production model than this S10, is actually in, you know, a more advanced mask, if you want to look at it that way. As said, I do like the S10, it's a very good mask, but this is definitely a better successor model. As I said, unfortunately, Britain did not go with the FM12 or CT12 design. I think some armed police were issued FM12s and CT12s, but for the most part, other nations bought them, Britain didn't. Britain then went to the GSR with, you know, and I've complained about that before in other videos, so I won't go into it now. The GSR is a good mask, it has several drawbacks, and personally, if I was the person, you know, deciding who to buy masks for in my country, I would support a company that's actually a domestic one to your country and, you know, help workers in your own country, not ordering an American company to make masks for you and probably paying more for them than you could do to domestically produce your own mask. Anyway, that's enough of the geopolitics. Let's test the mask itself. Right, first I'll pop the mask on. As I said, it's comfortable, easy to adjust, nylon sort of straps. Whether it is nylon or not, I don't know, but fabric straps. As I said, rubber is better if you're actually in a contaminated environment, but in terms of comfort, I would definitely rather have a fabric strap. If you had an NVC hood over the mask anyway, it wouldn't make the slightest difference. So, over the top of my head and pull it down. And we should have a good seal. Now we're just going to tighten the straps fully. Make sure nothing can leak in. It's got these quick release clasps on there as well, so sometimes when you're tightening it, they spring open. Then you can just clip them back like that. But as I said, this should be very tight. It's almost a perfect fit to my face. The only mask that seals better than this is my um, Forshida F2A4. As you can see, we've got a vacuum. So, um, if I can't get that one tighter, time to test it. So here we go. Hopefully this filter still works. If the filter stops working, I'll just switch it to a new filter for the sake of the video. Yeah, and as expected, I can't smell anything yet. So as I was saying, the advantage to this mask is you have these plugs on either side. And what you can do, a lot of modern masks have started incorporating this, but you can unscrew it and put a filter on each side so you have less air resistance. Well, I personally find one Avon S10 style filter is good enough for, um, you know, not causing much breathing difficulty. But if you wanted to, you could have two on each side. If you were using it in a riot sort of scenario, you could have two particulate filters on each side. That would be fairly lightweight. But yeah, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, but I can tell you, the mask um, works pretty well for stopping anything getting in, as it should. As I said, I've got very good field of view. A lot of people are wondering, aren't the panoramic view masks better? And I've not particularly found to be, and I'll try and explain why. Now, this probably can be fixed on certain panoramic view masks, and it probably has been fixed on certain panoramic view masks, but when you have two individual eye lenses, you can still see between the eyes, because one eye can see, say, this much, the other eye sees this much, so they cross over. So what you get is a bit of ghosting between the eyes when you have both eyes open, but you can see it there, it's not like dead vision. It's um, a bit like if you looked at your nose cross-eyed, how the vision doubles. So you can see perfectly in between, it's just you get a bit of ghosting where you can half see each of the rims there. In terms of vision, I can see to about here, which obviously you'd expect with it being like that. But what I mean is that I can see pretty much into my peripheral vision with a bit cut off on each side. If I look right and look left, it doesn't cut much off, so that's good. So an issue of panoramic lenses is that although you can see your own nose better, which isn't really a function you need to do, I found if you try looking down iron sights and you're doing something like that, you know, you've got the gun, like that, obviously set up in a way that you can lean into it, I found a lot of panoramic lenses, how they go around, make it actually harder to get the gun sight in the right place. That's the problem I have with the Scott GSR, which is one of the reasons I don't like it. In my opinion, if you were trying to aim with it, you'd be uh, finding it harder to do uh, than with one of these. And I tried it with a variety of scopes and iron sights. Supposedly with the Susat and the ACOG that the British Army used, it's all right, but 
how much of that is true and how much is um, politics on how much they want to spend on the army and bribes, I don't know. But anyway, as I said, the CT-12, I really can't fault it because I was lucky enough. I got this model, as I said, it's a 2001 dated model, I think I said earlier. So that means under a 20-year lifespan of a mask, it would last till 2021. And it would, you know, technically last much longer than that. As we've done on this channel, we have tested World War II masks that still work. Obviously, with new filters on, we don't want to breathe through an old asbestos filter. But modern filters on World War II masks, and often if they've been kept well, they'll still survive. Modern masks are made of much better materials, so a mask like this obviously work fairly well still. But, as said, the Avon CT12, this one I got for about £30. And £30 for a mask in this condition actually happened to be the right size, so I don't know if the person advertised the size when I ordered it, is really good. If you see a CT12 or an FM12 for a good price on eBay, grab it. A lot of people keep giving me links and like, oh, I've seen a CT12 or an FM12 for like $40, and I don't know if that's worth it. Yes, it is worth it for that price. As I said, this is my favourite mask out of the 59 masks I own. I think 53 masks if you don't count duplicates. And, like I said, this beats the Forshida F2A4 very narrowly, beats the S10 by a little margin. Even masks I've got, like the GSR, which are technically newer and meant to be better than this, I don't think they are better than this. Jacob Dagger said he prefers a Canadian C4 to this mask. I don't have a Canadian C4, so I can't tell you how good it is, but... As I said, out of the 50 plus masks in my collection, this is by far my favourite. Well, not by far, because I said it only beats the Forshida F2A4 slightly. But, as I said, I'm, I like the fact it doesn't have a drinking tube on. People have said, why would you get the CT12 if it doesn't have a drinking tube, get the FM12? The reason being is, with the S10, I find the drinking tube's a bit awkward and it pokes me in the face. With this mask, it doesn't have a drinking tube, it can't do that. Well, if you wanted to drink... I personally would advise against that, because you see, when you're drinking with a gas mask on, you have still have a risk of, you know, drinking toxic chemicals. When you have a drinking tube, they have a series of, like, locking steps that are designed so you can't, you know, drink anything, imbibe any um, toxins, but it's not a floor-proof system. And I don't think a lot of people who buy the mask with the drinking straws ever bother actually buying all the bottle caps so you can use them. So personally, I'd rather have the reduced weight and not a drinking tube sticking me in the face that I do with the um, S10. I know I can cut it shorter, but I don't really want to. It's one of those things where if I cut it shorter, I'd have difficulty getting it into my mouth because it's been cut short. If I leave it the current length, it sticks into the side of your face until you turn it to go into your mouth. So it's not really a win-win scenario. Other masks have certainly done the drinking tube better than the S10 did. For example, on the Israeli 4A1 civilian mask, the drinking tube sits slightly outside of your mask, and what you do is you push the front of the mask forwards using the drinking tube little nozzle, and that pushes it into your mouth that way, so you manipulate it from outside the mask rather than it sticking, you know, it's, it's further away and you can push it in using a little thing on the side of the mask. I personally think that is a better system than the thing that twists it into your mouth where it just kind of pushes into your cheek the whole time. So there you go, Avon CT12. I'll just open this up to check that I can smell the air freshener. Yep, <clears throat> immediately I can smell that. So let's reseal the mask. Very simple to do on this. And I can't smell it anymore because it's purged from the mask. So there you go, the Avon CT12. It may not be the best mask in the world, but it's certainly the favourite in my collection. It works really well, it's passed the test, and as said, it's my favourite mask for those of you who keep asking me what's my favourite gas mask. The Avon CT12, as far as I'm aware, it's still in production. You can get one if you want one. If you just look around long enough on eBay, you should get one for a good price. So there you go, Avon CT12, that's my favourite gas mask.